and when you are practicing falconry it's one of those passions one of those all-encompassing um, parts of your life you know it's, it's not just something that you can put away and forget about for the rest of the year you only get rewarded by seeing what the birds are capable of by putting in the groundwork and, and you know, building up over you know, time and I mean often years to get to the pinnacle of what you're trying to achieve. We're going to be heading out on the hill here. We've got a, one of my favourite little spots of hills here. And we've got a, a long bowl coming through and we've got some lovely big thick header patches on the sides and in the bottoms. And I'm hoping we should have a good few hairs down in the bottoms of these. We're going to be flying it into quite a, a brisk wind today so we've got a, a good clippy wind and hopefully we're going to get on the other side of the face a little bit later on and put Cappy up. But we're going to concentrate on this side first, give Baby and the fruit tail a run through. We need to catch quite a few hares today because we've got a lot of people joining us in the cottage tonight for food, so we're having a, a proper hare medley, so the boys better do well, but I think Baby really just wants to go back in his box and go back to sleep. And hopefully we'll be alright. Come on, sir. There we go. Good boy. Yes, wake up. Unfortunately, David was just the wrong side of the hill for that one, so that's the first first slip and first catch for Baby. And that was a lovely flight. Again, came all the way down the sorry, all the way down the hill. Um, couldn't have wanted for a nicer flight than that. So uh, hopefully we'll get a few more and get some on camera. You alright, young man? Yes, I know. Oh, didn't you do well, young man? Good boy. Hunting with them every day. Well, they normally hunt every day. We normally, we normally hunt, or we normally fly. If we're not hunting, then we're we're training. But we normally try and get them exercised at least five times a week. Um, so they're, uh, as I say, they're they're pretty much on the money now. I mean, they've been they've been flying hard, and we've been putting a lot of hairs in the bag over the last couple of weeks. So uh, we've been catching. I don't know, probably an average of eight to ten hairs a day. Um, you know, you only get uh, this number of hairs on a, a managed estate, on a managed moorland. Um, and the reason for that is because of the predator control that goes on here. So they're taking the foxes away, they're taking the weasels away, they're taking the stoats away. Obviously that's for the, the grouse that are on the ground. But the major benefit is that also allows the hare populations to really climb. And so it gives a real big surplus of hares especially this time of year before the hard winters come in we can come in and, um, and hunt so everybody benefits and again the hares benefit because you're taking out the excess population so then you're curving the population away from then suffering from disease or starvation later on in the year. We've got a really really lovely wind facing hill here um, and we've got some hopefully some deep head beds that may hold a, the odd hair or two. I think the majority of hairs, if they've been sensible, would have gone over the lee side, but fingers crossed there might be some back in here. So we're going to work the birds through, we're going to let Cappy off, um, and in this wind, it should be quite spectacular because uh, we've got a, a good, good strong headwind coming in here. So it's, it must be 30, 35 miles an hour um, gusting up to. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's certainly going to get hairy in one way or another. What sort of height will he go to? No idea, we'll soon find out. Hopefully your lens will be able to pick him up.
Well, that was a, certainly a hard one here and there. There weren't a lot of hairs in there, and the ones that are in here are right in this edge. And uh, he got that one just as it was going down a hole there. So I'll just quickly trade him off and then move on and see what else we can find. So Roy, we haven't got our complement of hairs for like Dindin. No, so we're going to have to pump it up with a few rabbits, I'm afraid. So uh, luckily the goshawk has been acting very well as the cook's hawk and has been adding very well to the bag. So um, because you kiboshed the day by turning up and uh, well, they're not rude at all. We've been doing really well and then David turns up with the camera and it all goes wrong. So we only caught a few hairs today and we've got a lot of people to feed. So. They're gonna, a few people are going to have to dine on bunny rabbits, so uh, we're going to take her out. Um, it's best to actually look at her in a green light at the moment because she is absolutely filthy. She's caught a lot of quarry over the last couple of weeks, and she's been having a lot of tumbles um, in the in the peat and in the mud. So um, she's an absolute mess. So we shall crack on and see what we can find. That was a bit of an easy one, but again, we need a few rabbits in the bag. And away we go. But not a bad day. We've ended up with um, five hare and three rabbits. So uh, we certainly won't go hungry tonight. I think we're feeding nine tonight, so we're gonna have to make the most of it. But, and again, they're, they're so, so simple to prepare. Um, and we use uh, the back straps and we um, make curries or stroganoffs or whatever else out of those, so out of the loins. And then we make um, pies and um, stews out of the back legs. And the, the amount of meat that you get off a hair is quite phenomenal. And uh, we'll just quickly have a, a run through. So I've got my special knife that um, Emberleaf kindly made me um, and again this is uh, made from one of my old hawking partners so with uh, with her talons embedded in there so uh, it's certainly got a lot of meaning to bring it back up to Scotland and uh, draw some blood with the hairs so all we do there is just run the knife down the back open it up and then all we've got to do is run the knife down the back of the spine Both sides, cut in, and then all you do is remove the loin like that. And again, this side, off, run it down, and take it out. Then we just continue down all the fur off the back leg, just cut there, and off, dislocate the joint, back leg off is almost akin to venison, we don't bother soaking it with the rabbit than we do. We put that in a, a butter, buttermilk solution just to, to take out that sort of rabbity smell from them. Oh, this dog's walking through. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we're gonna be in for a better day today. Interestingly, as we arrived, um, it looked like a, a Goldie was um, just departing. And as we pulled into the, the, um, the little car parking area here, there's a, a hare that's been plucked and devoured. Um, and it looks like uh, it's been you know, caught and eaten by an eagle. So, you know, I mean, it's absolutely superb when you're up here and you do see the wild ones come in. Then we get our birds down, um, just call them straight into the fist or, or stop flying and wait for them to pass by. Why would you bring it in? Bring the eagle in. Yeah. Well, no, when, obviously, when we're flying up here, we're flying, you know, in, uh, you know, or possibly, you know, on their their territory boundaries. So um, our eagles would be an encumber into their territory. So yeah, we don't want to uh, cause any conflict. So it's much easier just to get our eagles in and, and wait for them to move on.
you know, something that we've seen an increased amount of over the last couple of three years is hares seem to be utilising their holes a lot more. I mean, blue hares, unlike brown hares, do use holes. Whether or not it's just a case where we're not getting as much snow in the winter, so the evolutionary tactic of turning white um, with the peelage turning from summer coat to winter coat and obviously completely changing colour to match what should be the landscape um, is not doing them any favours really. They're getting left out on the on the hills, um, shining out like the leech of Eakins. So um, yeah, you, you certainly can't blame them for using the holes, but it's very frustrating for the eagles when they're coming in and uh, the flight just abruptly ends and um, the hares the hares made it home. But, yeah, that that is part of it. You know, that is part of hunting, and it's uh, you've certainly got to admire the hares. Um, yeah, they are just phenomenal creatures, beautiful, beautiful animals, and uh, yeah, it is always nice when they do get away. You can tip your cap at them and uh, leave them to uh, hopefully continue and uh, breed a few more for the years to come.